Oh, this is not the right spot. My name's Zach. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the Terrans and the Hainish on power. Uh, so there's not a lot about the Terrans and the Hainish, kind of just like in the last chapter or two, and then just sprinkled in everywhere. But I think we have enough to talk about it. All right, so playgrounds, right? You're, imagine, imagine you're a child, right? You have a play. Your parents took you to a playground, okay? And you're with your friend, and your friend's like, hey, I dare you to go up there and jump off. And you, you're gonna do it, right? Because he dared you. So you're up, you're up at the top, and you jump off. You land like right there or something. And you sprain your ankle, right? Okay. Fast forward. Your ankle's healed. You're back at the playground. You think you're gonna go back up to the top up there and jump off again? No, you're probably not, because you know you're gonna sprain your ankle again, or probably something worse. So that's basically the Terrans, right? Except instead of spraining their ankle, they uh, wiped off all the plants on their planet and basically made the planet in. in Inhabitable, or whatever that word is, something like that. <laughs> Uninhabitable. Yeah, that's what I said. But so basically, like, they messed up their planet, and they know that they have to not do what they did in the past, or else it's going to get even worse. So that's my little, my little playground story. And uh, the, <laughs> the person, the uh, thinker or group that I think they're most comparable to is the Stoics. Uh, that guy just looks thrilled to be a Stoic. But, <laughs> They're like a, like a thinker group. It's like a belief system. Uh, so some notable Stoics are Marcus Aurelius and Seneca. All right, and we're gonna talk about power from chapter four. So how would you guys define power? Who makes the decisions? Who makes the decisions? Anyone have any? Who, who has the money? Anyone else? All right. So I looked up on some website, I think it was like Webster Merriam, is that what it's called? Something like that? It's like a dictionary online. And it said, possessions of control, authority, or influence over others. So why well, I think this is important, like chapter four uh, talks a lot about power and Tinder. I think it's really important because there's always going to be power in the world. So like all these questions are just really practical and applicable to everyday life. Like, even if you think to back to um, to the Le Guin novel, uh, even on Anaris, like, there was still power, even though they didn't want there to be. Like, Sabul still had power over Shevik, even though there was supposed to be, like, no power. So, there's just always going to be power, even no matter what the situation is. Um, so, the Terrans slash Hainish and the Stoics have similar conservative views in the sense that they both want to preserve the status quo. So they just really like want to keep everything the way it is. They like how everything's going, and uh, yeah. So the first question: Can social order be maintained without power? Uh, so my quote from here, from the dispossessed, is: We controlled neither appetite nor violence. We did not adapt. We destroyed ourselves. That's from King, uh, the ambassador. And uh, basically, like they know, like. The way their government was, they were selfish, and there just like wasn't a lot of power. So like they just kind of destroyed themselves basically, and they know that if there's not power, that they're just gonna destroy themselves again. Uh, the Stoics, um, the Stoics would also answer no. Uh, who should rule? Um, so earlier, another quote from King. Uh, said it would make a League of Worlds possible a federation, talking about um, Moshevik's theory. But that's the kind of government they want, so in a League of Worlds, it would be like representatives from everyone, from all the worlds. So they want uh, people to, they want people to rule through representatives. Um, so yeah, they just want everyone to be like represented in one big thing. And then the Stoics, uh, agree with that. They think because if there would be, uh, if if people are ruling through representatives, it would support the interests of the many instead of the interests of the few, and that's what the Stoics want. Next question: Is it good to have power? Both of these really think that like it's not. They're just kind of indifferent, really. They think like if power is offered to you, if you have a chance to have power, then you should take it but it's not necessarily good, they're just kind of indifferent. So, a uh, quote from Seneca, 
he who has great power should use it lightly. So like, if you have power, like, just make sure you're using it right. Um, quote, another quote from Kang, pretty much all my quotes from Terrence are from Kang. Uh, <laughs> there are no forests left on my, no forest left on my earth. The air is gray, the sky is gray, it is always hot. So like, they know, like, what power did to the people who had power. Like, they got selfish and greedy and they took all the resources and just ruined their planet. So, like, but they know they need to have power, otherwise the people are just going to do that. So that's why they're indifferent. Like, they know power can corrupt, but they know they also need power in order to maintain social order. That's, that's what they think. Why obey? Uh, the absolute regimentation of each life towards the goal of racial survival. So, like, once again, they know if they don't obey their government, if they don't like listen to what the government's saying, that they're just going to just destroy their planet. It's going to be they're going to be unable to live there. Uh, I got two quotes here uh, for the Stoics: uh, "To be feared is to fear. No one has been able to strike terror into others and at the same time enjoy peace of mind." Wow, I think I really just put that on the wrong slide. <laughs> so basically. Forget that. Uh, <laughs> the reason the Stoics think it's good to obey is because it will be beneficial. If uh, it'll be beneficial towards the interests of the many rather than the interests of the few. So, like, if you're obeying, or if you're not obeying, and you're probably doing something wrong, it's probably hurting somebody else because the government's trying to look out for everyone. So, basically, the Stoics think like, yeah, if you're not obeying, you're probably hurting. So basically, the Terrans and the hate. Terrans slash Hainish and the Stoics want everything to stay the same. They basically just want to keep things how they're going because they think things are going smooth. They think things are going real nice. Uh, and yeah, does anyone have any questions? Questions? So I feel like Takbar and Vea are kind of both outliers on both planets, so do you think they would fit under uh, this philosophical view? I don't think Vio would, because uh, she's, or the Terrence and the Hainich are really trying to like all look out for each other and just make sure, like keep the overall well-being. And I think Vio's just like really looking out for herself. I think probably the same with Takbar, that they're both looking out for themselves and the Terrence and Hainish are more concerned with like the overall well being of their people. Other questions? Come on. You you get, I write what, down when you write questions. So what was the most interesting part of researching this topic? Most interesting part? Um, He's going to answer nothing as a rest. I have another question. I'll think about it. Okay. Um, I have another question. Yeah, yeah. Is the playground story something that you that you went through? No. Oh. I think I was smart enough not to jump off roofs. So, like, with that analogy, do you think that people can come to this conclusion without having to go through? I mean, yeah, like, I was scared of heights when I was little, so I was like, I'm not going to jump off the roof because I'm going to hurt myself. But I think after, if you do go through something like that, it's a lot easier, like, yeah. yeah. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Oh, so do you think, um, I, I guess this is kind of more, like, do you think America has some some type of status quo, I guess I would ask? You So, wait, so you said, so you said, yeah, you think we do have uh, some sort of status quo for America, or... No, I couldn't really hear you right there. I asked you if you could repeat it, but... I, I oh! Now. Um, Sorry. Do you mean, like, as individuals, or as a whole country? Just, like, yeah, as a whole country, I guess. Do you um, think we have a status quo? It depends if you're talking about, like, the people or the government. I think the government definitely... I don't know, actually. I think the government probably has a status quo. But, like, it's, it's hard because there's so many conflicting views. That's hard to say, like, there's one status quo. Like, 
I'm sure there's probably like a Republican status quo and a Democratic status quo and like a Libertarian status quo, but it's hard to put there to be just one single American agenda. The idea of the status quo is what is, is. That's all. So yeah, actually, basically, what is, is. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Guys.